Welcome back to the Global News Relay Solutions Journalism. I'm Ed Martila. And I'm Courtney Rogers. Let's go back to the UK to Coventry University. We've worked on several international projects with students at Coventry. And in this edition of the Global News Relay, they're tackling some serious issues including crime, immigration, and race. Hello and welcome to the Global News Relay 2017 from Coventry University. I'm Kapali Parekh. And I'm Sam Ingrams. Today the subjects are immigration and racism. Home office figures show that there has been a 15% rise in racially motivated crimes in the UK since 2014 and a 34% increase in religiously motivated crimes over the same period. Meanwhile, the UK's net migration since the EU referendum has fallen. According to the Financial Times, this is due to an increase in emigration. Last year, nearly a third more Polish and other Eastern European people left the country than the previous year. That's around 39,000 people. The number of permanent visas that have been granted by the Home Office has drastically fallen since 2009, when nearly 250,000 grants were awarded. Last year, there were only 59,000. However, most recent figures showed UK net migration standing at 273,000 people per year in 2016, which is way above our government's stated target of 100,000. However, is this what the British people want? I went out onto the streets of Coventry to find out what British people thought about immigration and racism. Across the Atlantic and America, the rise of Trump has been associated with rises in anti-Muslim hate crime. Heavily armed protests have taken place outside of mosques in Texas and Arizona. And the president has been trying to push through a ban on migration from several Muslim majority countries. In a response to a challenge about this ban, Representative Katrina Pearson responded, so what, they're Muslim. We've sent a deeper to find out more. People have the rights to pick their own religion, and plus America is a multicultural country, yeah. continent. So you need to you need to allow Islam to be around. Education mm -hmm. Parliament should be educating students um, to be more I don't know not open-minded, but I guess acceptance towards religions because everyone has their own beliefs. Yeah. So I think that's one of the solutions. We would now I'd like to take this over to our panel, which consists of Marcus Fogg, a member of the Coventry UK Independence Party, and Coventry student chair Alex Cairns. £11.4 billion was benefited from a fiscal point of view to the economy based on EU and international students. So immigration from an educational sector benefits us. We have 235,000 staff that work in our National Health Service, which you could love to discuss that is actually uh, burdening our health service. But actually, if you look at how many staff are from the uh, EU, it's well over 100,000, which actually shows that actually we need uh, EU migrants to work in our health service. Immigration in itself, mm. small time, isn't too bad, but I think mass immigration is the capital exploitation of the global working poor. Uh, and there was a study recently done by The Economist in Eastern Europe 
uh, on Bulgarian medical students. 90% are expected to emigrate once they graduate. I mean, you say it's a choice. I mean, it, a newly qualified nurse in the Philippines uh, uh, is likely to earn £100 a month over there. Over here, it's an 18 times increase. Immigration are always down to the economic benefits or of, of the UK or the negatives, but I think there's a wider argument about the effects that immigration has on the third and second world. I mean, for example, 20% of the Baltic states have lost their young working populations over the last five to ten years. How are they supposed to pay for their pensions and care for their elderly in the future? Or do we simply allow the elderly to rot right on our doorstep in Europe? Immigration benefits our country, and the economic argument is the main argument we should be looking at, firstly. Secondly, when we talk about the second and third world countries around the world, the fact that uh, Marcus has stated that we are taking them. Let's, let's look at the facts. These countries have poor government and some of these countries have corrupt government. So what we need to be doing is working with the government and seeing actually how we make them uncorrupt, how we actually help from a financial point of view and from a foreign and diplomatic point of view. And then once we've sorted out the issues in those countries, then we can start to actually build a better relationship. But immigration benefits our country. And from a social cohesion point of view, the only thing that's breaking apart our country is the party like UKIP. As racism is a growing concern within solutions journalism, feminism has proved itself as an important movement to consider. Feminism has undergone many changes since the 20th century. From the suffragette movement to post-feminism represented in pop culture, it seems like we're moving away from the man-hating ideas about this movement. We have Divya reporting on the changing misconceptions of feminism. Women's rights has too often become synonymous with man-hating. If there is one thing I know for certain, it is that this has to stop. I need feminism because I am a woman and I want to have the same rights between the genders. There is still a huge difference between us. Despite all the feminist group efforts, we are not equal yet. I cannot be considered for some positions as some people might think that I am way too weak for it and the gap between our wages is still significant. Feminism to me is just equality. Being able to do what you want to do without being like questioned or interrogated. It's all about women's liberation from age old chapels that have been holding them down for ages. They deserve the same right regardless of religion, regardless of race and obviously social class. Women. They are our mothers, sisters, daughters, wives. Friends, they should have the same right on the ground of the equality of the sexes. My experience with feminism is abrasive. There's this girl I used to follow on Tumblr. She was massively into man bashing, and I guess that's the limited knowledge that I have of feminism. I feel that feminism is important and it gives women the opportunity to be heard and let their voices be heard. Um, equal opportunities, equal treatment and equal rights are what I believe help define feminists and believing that men and women should be equally treated and have the same opportunities. No matter how many people in the world think that feminism is no longer relevant, it actually is because feminism will only become old or irrelevant when gender equality is 100% achieved and to me it isn't achieved yet so being a part of this campaign and really standing up for feminism, teaching people what it is, especially boys and men because they do tend to be the more ignorant gender. To me, feminism is the chance for people to be free. 
to be free of stereotypes and stigmas and expectations. It's a chance for people to be who they want to be, regardless of what history thinks they should be. Bearing in mind that people get scared by the term feminism because they think it's about crazy women wanting to fight men or crazy women who hate men, who don't want to be associated with them. I feel like our campaign and as a team we're going to break that stereotype and actually show that feminism isn't scary and it actually is something that everyone should know about and practice because it is important and men and women are equal and therefore should be equal in every single sector of society and the gender parity one day will hopefully be achieved. Climate change is one of the major issues our world is facing today, with the Great Barrier Reef pronounced dead and the global temperature increased by 1.7 degrees since pre-industrial levels, it raises a cause for concern. A global warming campaign has been launched in Coventry on social media platforms. It's targeted towards young people on how to recycle and consume energy responsibly. We've sent Berta and Victoria to find out more. Me and my team have launched a campaign on global warming. It's a part of our module, Journalism Activism. It's made to spread the awareness of tackling the problems related to global warming. We are targeting students and young people who have a crucial role to play in the way how we treat our planet. To reach out to them, we have created social media pages such as Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. We have invited as many young people as possible so we can reach out to them. So the content which we share in them would hopefully make an impact of how they recycle and consume energy. Over the past month we have ensured that the pages are uploaded with interesting and informative articles and pictures or videos related to global warming. However, global warming is everyone's duty. Humanity should strive to ensure that they save what we have before we lose it forever. We have one planet, one home. Leaving is not an option, saving it is. People donate bicycles to charity shops or to um, bike shops. Um, we collect them. And one part of our business is that we sell the bikes through uh, hospitals and trusts and some of the proceeds that are sold through hosp goes to hospices in the UK and also several times a year we do universities like this one here uh, this business is not my business but the person who owns the business um, had a contact um, in the prison I think he knew a prison uh, governor or a prison warder and they were looking for work in their workshop and this seemed like a, a, a great idea uh, to teach them to teach them skills that they could use in, uh, in the, when they were back to civilian life, and um, it, it works really well. So these ones are ranging from about 45 pounds uh, up to about 70 or 80 pounds for the most expensive one. But these bikes would retail for up to 500 pounds in the shops. Uh, but whatever people have donated have donated. Um, they will tend to donate them in when they're broken and no longer working and they're uneconomical for them to repair because to take these bikes into a proper bicycle repair shop and have them professionally repaired would cost them probably more than the, than the cost of buying certainly more than the cost of buying one of these reconditioned bikes. It's a good way to recycle and keep, uh, yeah, keep, keep all this metal and rubber out of the scrap tips. a recycle bike in my everyday life because uh, I used to spend nearly 100, 150 pounds only for the Ubers, taxis, buses in uh, every single month and I just decided to buy a bike and the bike happened to be also a used bike and um, I feel 
more energized. I drive every day five kilometers and if not more. Same time while using my bicycle, I am not only saving my money, uh, I also save the environment. I don't use any taxis, I don't use any Ubers or buses and that basically reduces an enormous amount of CO2 emissions. Uh, and if every single person would just, do, would just choose to use a bike, uh, you can imagine what would be the impact on the environment. Thanks for watching us here at Coventry University. As part of the Global News Relay, I've been Kapali Parekh. And I've been Sam Ingrams. Wow, what, what a very interesting uh, uh, news piece about the bicycle program, uh, seeing uh, you know, more and more bikes just you know, being recycled. Yeah, absolutely, I think it's great as well. Well, coming up on the Global News Relay, how students at Marquette University are using their own meal plans to feed others in their community. And more solutions for hunger, how a food bank in West Alabama is providing food to those who need it most. Plus, journalism students from Baylor University give us an inside look at Women's March in Washington, D.C. The march was intended.